I bought every smart white light bulb on Amazon that fit my criteria of being locally controlled with no required manufacturer app. And after testing their brightness, energy efficiency, dimming curve, flicker percentage, min and max color temperature, and CRI, this Zigbee bulb from Inner and this Matter over Wi-Fi bulb from Linkine stuck out as way better than the rest. I've got links to both those bulbs down in the description, but stick around to see exactly why they're the best. And as always, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, and I bought all these bulbs with my own money. The first important question is why would you choose a smart bulb over a traditional bulb with a smart dimmer? And the answer is that in addition to more precise dimming with less flicker, smart bulbs also give you the option to adjust the color temperature during the day so that you can use cooler, more energizing light while the sun is up and warmer, more relaxing light at night. And of the 16 bulbs on Amazon that fit my open protocol criteria, 13 of them also have controllable color temperature. In the first test, I used a power monitor and a lux meter to measure each bulb's efficiency. And after setting the bulbs to a 3000 Kelvin color temperature, the brightest bulb by far was the IKEA Trad Free at 1083 lumens, while the lighting inside, inner, Orion filament and nanoleaf were all around 900 lumens. I then divided their brightness by their measured power draw in watts, and I was surprised to see that six of the 16 bulbs, including the brightest IKEA Trad Free, were above 100 lumens per watt, which is excellent even for a non-smart LED bulb. I also measured the brightness at 75, 50, 25, and 1% to be able to plot the dimming curve and determine the minimum brightness, and I found that the cough, Shelly Vintage, Hue, and Nanoleaf bulbs could dim down impressively low to less than one lumen. And as for the dimming curves, humans perceive brightness logarithmically. So the ideal dimming curve is more of a J shape rather than a straight line. So the curves shown in green will appear to be more even and natural than the ones that are shown in orange. Another big advantage of using smart bulbs instead of traditional bulbs with a smart dimmer is that they aren't limited to 120 hertz for their dimming frequency, which means that they can have really low flicker even when they're dimmed and they can use much higher PWM frequencies which means that the flicker should be much less noticeable. I measured the flicker of each bulb throughout the entire dimming curve using a Hoppacolor flicker meter, and I found that seven of the 17 bulbs had less than 1% flicker throughout the entire brightness range, which is absolutely excellent but the only Zigbee bulb that had zero flicker was the one from Inner. However, it is worth noting that while the Zigbee bulbs from Hue and Era had fairly high flicker percentages, their PWM frequencies were 1.2 kilohertz and 1.8 kilohertz, which means that their flickering should actually be imperceptible to the human eye, but I personally prefer zero flicker to high frequency flicker. In addition to low flicker, my other big sticking point for my light bulbs in my house is their color rendering index, or CRI. The concept behind CRI is that every light source has a slightly different emission spectrum, and every object will reflect unique wavelengths of light within that spectrum. But if the light source has a spiky or uneven spectrum that's missing those specific wavelengths, then those objects won't look quite right. I used my Hoppacolor 350C colorimeter to measure the emission spectrum and CRI of each bulb when tuned to a 3000 Kelvin color temperature, and I found that the Zigbee bulb from Inner had the best CRI at 94.4, including a very decent R9 score of 85, which is typically the most difficult color for LEDs to reproduce. And I have to say that overall I was pleasantly surprised by the CRI performance of almost all these bulbs, with only five bulbs coming in under 90 CRI at 3000 Kelvin. I also used my Hoppacolor to measure the minimum and maximum color temperature that each bulb could produce, and the subsequent CRI at those color temperatures. And I found that the Nanoleaf bulb had the largest range at 2035 Kelvin on its warmest setting and 6729 Kelvin on its coolest setting. But the Orion, Inner, Hue, and Whiz bulbs all had similar ranges of around 2000 Kelvin to 6500 Kelvin. Though the Orion was clearly using RGB lighting for its warmest setting and had a CRI of under 40, which is not acceptable. And the two best performing bulbs when looking at their CRI at their min and max color temperatures were the Zigbee bulb from Inner, which had a CRI of 91.7 at 2056 Kelvin, and a CRI of 89.5 at 6490 Kelvin, and the Matter Over Wi-Fi bulb from Linkine was just slightly better than that with a CRI of 91.0 at a minimum color temperature of 2682 Kelvin, and an impressive CRI of 92.8 at 6396 Kelvin. I also measured their DUV values, which basically shows if the hue of the bulb is shifted away from a completely neutral white, and I found that the Shelly, Wiz, and Singlet vintage bulbs all had positive DUV values, meaning they were shifted slightly towards green, while the hue, Sylvania, and lighting inside bulbs were all very close to completely neutral, and the rest of the bulbs had negative DUV values, meaning they're shifted towards a pink hue, with the inner bulb being the most pink shifted, with a DUV of 0.00865 when set to a 3000 Kelvin color temperature. Another less 
talked about but important aspect of light bulbs is whether they're rated to use in fully enclosed fixtures and whether they're sealed property to use in damp spaces like a bathroom or a covered patio. And to my surprise, none of these smart bulbs are rated for fully enclosed fixtures, but over half of them specifically say that they can be used in damp locations. However, while buying the correct bulb for your installation location will help extend its lifespan, sometimes components fail, and since these smart bulbs are considerably more expensive and complicated than traditional LED bulbs, you may want to get them replaced under warranty, and I found that most of the bulbs had either a two or three year warranty, as long as you have a receipt or a proof of purchase, and the only bulbs that didn't have a clearly advertised warranty were the ones from Orion, Linkind, and Koth. And the last thing to cover, but maybe one of the most important things with smart bulbs is their connectivity and smart performance, which I'm going to break down into three different categories, starting with the adoption process. For the Zigbee bulbs, I used Home Assistant with a CC2531 Zigbee dongle and ZHA, and all the bulbs joined into my existing Zigbee network extremely quickly and with absolutely zero issues. For the matter over Wi-Fi bulbs, I used Apple Home and my Apple TV 4K to add each bulb to my network via Matter, and then I used Matter Sharing to add the bulbs to Home Assistant. And not only was this process more complicated than adding a Zigbee device, but it also just didn't work as well. And the worst of which was the whiz bulb, which added to HomeKit fairly easily, but then failed consistently when shared with Home Assistant. And my attempt to factory reset that bulb caused the matter compatibility to break completely, and from that point on, it only worked with the Wiz app. The Orion RGB tunable white bulb and the Singlet RGBW bulb also didn't work quite as well as the rest. And although they adopted into HomeKit and shared to Home Assistant fairly easily, after a power cycle, each bulb takes between 30 and 60 seconds before it's redesigned discovered and controllable in Home Assistant. The Nanoleaf bulb is slightly different and it uses matter over thread. And again, I used my Apple TV 4K as my thread border router, but it was extremely buggy. And after successfully adding it to HomeKit, it immediately became unavailable. And when I looked in the Nanoleaf app, it showed it constantly switching between Bluetooth only mode and thread mode. And I was never able to get it connected to Home Assistant via matter. The Cough and Shelly bulbs are Wi-Fi, but not matter compatible, but they do work very well with Home Assistant and don't require any manufacturer app. And both of them were simple to add to my network, by joining onto their Wi-Fi hotspot, adding my IoT network credentials, and after that they were automatically discovered with Home Assistant using the Shelly integration and the ESP Home integration. The second smart performance category is what happens to your smart bulb when it loses power or internet. Because if you have a power surge or a power flicker in the middle of the night, you don't want all of your light bulbs to just randomly turn on while you're sleeping. And I found that if you plan on using these bulbs without their manufacturer app, all of the matter bulbs have a default state of on that can't be adjusted via matter alone, even though it looks like that's an option in Home Assistant. But if you connect them to their manufacturer apps, most of them are configurable. And the only one that I couldn't easily change was the cough bulb, which would probably require some coding experience with ESP Home. For the Zigbee bulbs, all the default states were configurable in ZHA in Home Assistant, except for the Sylvania Smart Plus bulb and the Singlet Vintage, which had an unchangeable default state of on. I also tested whether the bulbs could be locally controlled when the internet was down, and I'm happy to report that all of them passed this test when controlled with Home Assistant and HomeKit, but the manufacturer apps from Linkind, Orion, and Singled needed an internet connection and a Wi-Fi connection to function, which obviously isn't possible when your home internet is down. And the third and last category for smart functionality is response time, and I found that on my network, the Zigbee bulbs had by far the quickest and most reliable response, followed by the Wi-Fi bulbs from Shelly and Cough, and most of the matter bulbs were fairly quick except for the Orion and Singled, which occasionally timed out. And as I said, that Nanoleaf thread bulb was a constant problem, and it never fully worked via thread or matter. And in all of my testing, I had to control it via Bluetooth and the Nanoleaf app. So in conclusion, as I said at the beginning of the video, the two best bulbs are pretty clearly the $15 inner 1100 lumen Zigbee bulb and the $7.50 Linkine matter over Wi-Fi bulb. The Zigbee bulb from inner requires you to have a Zigbee hub and Zigbee performance is going to depend a lot on how many other Zigbee devices you have. But to me, it is a serious standout with a high max brightness, almost zero flicker, great CRI, a huge CCT range from 2050 to 6,490 Kelvin and a two-year warranty. And as far as I can tell, the only downsides of the inner bulb are that it's not rated for damp locations, it's got a slightly lower efficiency than the others at 87.9 lumens per watt, and its $15 price tag puts it more in the middle of the road as far as affordability. On the other hand, the Linkine Matter over Wi-Fi bulb is half the price of the inner, and it doesn't require a hub. And of the Matter bulbs that I tested, it was one of the easiest to add to HomeKit and shared with Home Assistant almost immediately. The Linkine has even less flexibility than the inner, not even registering on my flicker meter until it reached 1% brightness. It had a higher cool white CRI, 
better efficiency, and it's rated for damp install locations. And the only downsides of the Linkind are the fact that it can't go lower than 2,682 Kelvin color temperature, the inability to change the power on behavior without the AI.app, and the fact that Linkind doesn't list any warranty information on the box or on Amazon. The Matter Over Thread Nanoleaf Bulb also performed extremely well on paper with very low flicker, high efficiency, great CCT range, and great CRI. But on my thread network using Apple TV 4K, it just didn't work. However, if you already have a strong thread network or you just want to invest in the thread protocol, the Nanoleaf bulbs are definitely worth a look at $10 each. And if you're looking for an exposed filament bulb, best one was by far the Orion Matter Over Wi-Fi bulb, which was just $8 and had really good CCT range, good CRI, great efficiency, and it's rated for damp locations. But it did have almost 30% flicker at 100% brightness, which gradually decreased until about 80% brightness and then remained under 1% for the rest of the dimming curve. Again, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links to all the bulbs down in the description. And as always, I appreciate when you use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. Thank you so much to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for your continued support of my channel. And if you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the hookup.